Now, movies often show us that being a genius is awesome. You can make amazing inventions or become a superstar. Unfortunately, the truth is a bit different. There's an opinion that the smarter a person becomes, the more unhappy they feel. It seems like high intelligence makes them lonely. Such people often get depressed. They feel different and misunderstood. And it's not because they think they're better than everybody. The thing is that the gene responsible for high intelligence makes them prone to sad moods. Oh, so that's why… Uh, huh, never mind. Scientists also notice that people with high IQs are often socially isolated, and it makes them anxious and stressed. Also, such people know how smart they are, so they have very high expectations of themselves. And when they don't meet these expectations, they get depressed. Now, imagine what can happen to a person with an IQ of 500. Will they feel bad too? Or will they think outside of these categories? Let's find out. Getting to such a high score gradually. So Einstein never passed an IQ test, but researchers estimated his level at about 160. It was 60 points higher than the IQ of an average person. And such a result is considered an indicator of a brilliant mind. With his developed intellect, the famous scientist managed to understand one of the main rules of the universe. As a result, he gave the world the theory of relativity. But along with periods of productive intellectual work, he also experienced severe bouts of despair. Okay, let's now move on to the next level, which is 250, to see what it's like to live with such high intelligence. Meet William James Sittis from Boston, who lived in the first half of the 20th century. From the first years after birth, William surprised his parents with his genius mind. He learned to write when he was one year old. A little later, he began to read the New York Times and understand everything written in it. His parents started to buy him textbooks and scientific literature to keep his mind in shape. But for William, all these books seem pretty simple. He read the works of Homer in the original ancient Greek, finished four books, learned several languages, and most likely knew everything school could teach him. And he learned all of it before he turned nine. The ordinary school was a boring place to him, so he entered Harvard at the age of nine. Unlike most geniuses, William wasn't an expert in just one field. He was developing in all directions – astronomy, biology, philosophy, mathematics, and much more. Everyone was shocked. The boy quickly passed all the exams and began to give lectures to students and teachers. Most people didn't understand the complex scientific topics that William was talking about. Still, those few among his audience who got what he said were amazed by the knowledge of the genius. Everyone thought he would have a great future in astronomy and mathematics. Perhaps William would have made great discoveries in the space industry, finding new planets and building spaceships. But instead, he faced loneliness. He had no friends, and some university teachers felt embarrassed that such a young guy taught them lectures. He left Harvard and became a celebrity. Journalists wanted to interview him, and newspapers wrote a lot of articles about his achievements. But William wasn't interested in all that. He decided to hide from everyone and lead a quiet life. He got a job as a carpenter in New York and continued to write his brilliant books. He published his works under various names, but they almost didn't bring him money. One day, he met a girl who pretended to be his friend but worked for reporters. She wanted to get material about the smartest human in the world. When William found out about it, he ran away and hid from everyone. He had no friends, so no one knew what he did in the last years of his life. William passed away at the age of 46. Scientists estimated that his IQ was from 250 to 300. This story shows how high intelligence can make a person unhappy. But what if William loved the attention he got from people and enjoyed his popularity? He could have become a talented businessman and a superstar. 
William knew several dozen languages and was well-versed in the humanities and mathematical sciences. His phenomenal memory could store and process a massive amount of information. Most people hardly understood what he was talking about in his lectures. Most likely, his professors somehow felt stupid around him. He could have mastered any profession in a matter of hours and even minutes. The world for him could have been an exciting game where he would have been the best player. But let's imagine what an IQ of 500 is. It doesn't mean someone with such a score would be twice as smart as William. They would be a hundred times smarter. And here's why. The fact is that the IQ score is the average of the total number of completed tests. Imagine a thousand people passing such a test, scoring a hundred points on average. So we can conclude that 100 is the average result. The scale of intelligence just didn't appear out of the blue. It's all based on the statistics of people who have passed the test. In intelligence categories, the difference between 80 and 100 points is much smaller than the difference between 120 points and 140. The further you go from the average, the higher your intelligence is. With each point, the difference becomes more significant. So a person with 500 points would see the whole universe differently. However, they wouldn't be able to tell people about their conclusions. Not because they wouldn't know how to find the words, but because people wouldn't understand them. The difference between the mind of an ordinary person and the mind of a person with an IQ of 500 is almost the same as the difference between the intelligence of a fish and that of an average human. For example, could you explain the Pythagorean theorem to your dog or hamster? Their brains are physically incapable of understanding this. A bee works all day, pollinating flowers and collecting honey. This is the main meaning of its life, and its world is limited by the same actions. Fly, pollinate, bring to the hive, rinse, repeat. And now, imagine that the bee finds out that some giant creatures collect honey to sell it all over the world. Such concepts are impossible for the bee's brain to understand. Our ultra-genius would also be unable to explain the knowledge about the universe they have. Even William James Siddons would have seemed simple-minded to them. It's possible that if we tried to perceive even a small part of their knowledge, we would go crazy. This would disrupt our understanding of the world and life in it. Would a bee be able to work further if its brain began to understand what happens to honey? A person with an IQ of 500 would likely be very lonely. How would you like living alone on Earth surrounded by animals like zebras? You wouldn't be interested in how zebras eat grass, run around the field, or sleep. For a person with such IQ, participation in social life would also be boring. All these scientific discoveries, the internet, movies, economics, and other things would be too insignificant for them. They would quickly master all the knowledge of humankind. But what would they do next? Perhaps they would build a spaceship, fly into deep space, or go into deep meditation. But for the first option, they would have to get a lot of money and interact with people. In a bad turn of events, most people would be terrified by such intelligence and keep this person locked up. Or this genius could devise a machine that would lower their level of intelligence. Or they could learn to play dumb. In any case, their lives would show us that a highly developed intellect can be both a real gift and a real curse for its owner. <laughs>